a wonderful week for me because God has brought me this far. Even though they had a, a lot of uh, things, but God has been faithful. And I want to believe the same to you. For you being here, that means God, this grace has brought us here. So welcome to the lesson uh, this morning. And it's talking about motivation and preparation for mission. We are still talking about our lesson, which is uh, God's mission, my mission, and how we can be participants or we can be co-workers with God in fulfilling his mission. So today is a very interesting uh, topic because it shows why we have to participate in the mission. And why, after that, how do we prepare mm -hmm. to participate in the mission? I will want to start with the words in the lesson comments where it says that while the motivation is a desire or reason a person has for doing something for someone, preparation involves an action to get ready so that things can be accomplished. All of us, I know, we have, we have an interest of doing something. Things come to our mind and we always have interest. In other words, we, we, we feel we should do something. But sometimes that feeling doesn't go far because we lack the way to do it. And therefore, the most important thing we miss after feeling is preparing to do it. Sometimes you feel like, I really wanted to do it, but I, I, could, I didn't know how to do it. So motivation is important, but also getting ready is important. So motivation has to do with something that causes us or propels you to do something or to act. By preparation, makes it possible for the plans to happen. <laughs> so in this lesson, we will see, like in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while yet we were sinners, God demonstrated his love. So in other words, the love that we see God had for us for sending his son to die for us is what, cons is what propels us what makes us feel like we should share the word of this to others. And therefore, again, the lesson was more magnificent. That even if we are propelled by that love, still we may miss to act if we are not ready. So, so in other words, as much as we feel, oh, God loves me, he sent his son to die for me, but we also need to know how can I share the message? So getting ready. So that's why the lesson is talking about motivation and preparation. They go together. But this morning, I will want us to look at the lesson from somehow slightly different perspective, but it's, it's st still within the lesson. I would I like us to dwell in uh, Luke 24, Acts 1 and Acts that's where our lesson basically will be more. But there are seven things I want us to go home with. Seven things, even if you forget about everything, don't forget about the seven things we will look at. One, in these seven things, all of, all of them start with P. So I want us to know today we will have discussed by the end of the day seven Ps. The first P is personal experience or personal encounter with Jesus. The second P is prophecy, or grounded in the word of God. And the three is the promise of Jesus Christ. And four is the prayer. And five is plan, or what we refer to as strategy. And six is the power, which we, will, of course, talk about as the Holy Spirit. And lastly, persecution. <clears throat> that as people who have believed in Christ, who are ready to share, we should remember that the world will not love us because it doesn't know us. So therefore, we shall face persecution. So to start us off, I want us to open our Bibles. 
and that is our book of chapter Luke, the book of Luke chapter 24. That's where we start our lesson from. Luke 24 is, um, gives us a very nice description. If you could have time and read the whole of it, but now I don't, we don't have time to read the whole of book, chapter Luke of, uh, the book of Luke chapter 24. But I would like us to start from, uh, oh, I can, I can say something very fast. Here we, we, we are given the story on how the women woke up very early in the morning. That is in the first one, the first day, the first day of the week. They woke up very early in the morning to go to the tomb where Christ was laid. They could not do whatever they did for somebody who has died on Friday, because the hours were very few, so the, the Sabbath entered, so they, Jesus was laid to rest without having a proper embalmment of the body. And therefore, the women woke up early to go and finish the process. But they were still wondering, who will we find there to move the stone for us to do whatever they did? But still, they still went, and uh, when they reached there, they didn't find Christ. They found the stone rolled away. They found um, the clothes left there. They didn't find Christ. So they were, they were stressed. And that's when um, verse 4, I want us to read verse 4. Oh, I want us to read yeah, verse 4. 24 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 4 says, And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Up to six. Up to six. Yeah. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek? The living among the dead. He is not here, but is risen. Remember now, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Yeah. So they they are being reminded what Jesus has spoken to them. Why are you seeking for someone who is alive in, in the place where people are, who are dead? And then they were they were perplexed. Is it true? You know, it's like something you can be told. You know, really? That's how we always ask. Are you saying the truth? Or are, are you kidding me? You know, that's how we... <laughs> yes, so they immediately leave and go to, the, to, to, to meet the other disciples. And yet, when they are there, I still want us to follow that story. When they are there, they still say the same words. Um, to the disciples, and uh, did the disciples believe? Uh, it's a way I loved it, the way it was putting it. Um, yeah, first 11, first 10, first okay. 10 and 11 and 12. Okay, I read. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just read for the floor. Okay. And they remembered his words, I'm dead verse 8. Yeah. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mm -hmm. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Verse, verse 11. 11 yeah. And their words seemed to them like idol tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose yeah. and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and they departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. So up to that point, do you see Peter, whether it's, does he really believe even? But even when he has seen still, has he believed? He's still marveling. Marveling is not believing. What happened? What happened? He, he doesn't really understand 
whether he does not remember exactly is it is it really true so he still uh, not accepting what the the women said and accepting what he has seen by himself so when we look at um, up to that point what can you talk about what can you tell about the experience of this of the women and the experience of the men with Jesus yeah I think I'm going to comment here about the disciples who are with Jesus more than three years with Jesus teaching them mm -hmm. telling them what to expect that I'm going to die I'm going to resurrect the same same disciples like Peter is still the last first year we see mm -hmm. thing marvel but did it really happen there's one thing I got from here the devil will work up to the 12th hour mm -hmm. to the last minute Jesus been crucified been imparted risen up he can appear to the disciple but still I think what he cannot that say that's the work of the devil and I was trying it myself now we as Christians we as followers of Christ we need to remember the devil is working, still working. And even if you have seen what Christ has done to us, he has selected went to heaven to petition for us. We need to remember the devil is working so hard that until the last minute, we should not slumber, we should not sleep. That's what I can comment about these disciples not believing Christ. Mm. I also got one thing here is that uh, those women and uh, the disciples were no different from us. We are told the word of God, we are preached to, or we study in our Bibles, but then we don't believe whether what we are studying or what we are being preached to, we really come to pass. So it tells us uh, how we are weak or lazy to pick up Bible prophecies and believe what God promises or says. Mm. I just want to uh, as she responds, I want you to relate these two things. We are trying to look at the experience or the encounter of these women and the disciples with Jesus in relation to their knowledge or understanding of what the prophecy was talking about Jesus. Do you think the two, if they didn't understand well the prophecy, was talking about Jesus, affected their experience with Jesus? So, in other words, as you, if you can talk about that, it's okay. But still, talk your whatever you are saying. <laughs> yeah, you you're going ahead of that. So, uh, but I wanted to say this. Uh, Allow me to say the introduction part of it, mm -hmm. then I can say about Peter quickly. Yeah. Um, motivation. Philippines, uh, uh, they said um, Philippines 1, 15 to 18 was the introduction of Paul, mm -hmm. telling us um, that I think when I was re reading this lesson, it was so crucial for me to read this. And uh, if somebody can read quickly, Philippians 1, Philippians 1, 15 to 18. Then I can just... Uh, yeah. Yeah. To be sure, some preach Christ out of envy and strife, but others out of goodwill. These do so out of love knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, seeking to cause me anxiety in my imprisonment. That is up to 17. My my comment was, uh, what motivates us to, to, to tell others about Christ? 
what is in our hearts what is in our hearts when we are saying is it we are saying to point or oh, because they are sinners than us what motivates us so what Paul is saying some will 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 talk out of envy or just to tell people uh, like Jonah you know he went and told huh? so out of anger out of hatred out of like you are superior than them or what motivates us to tell others that is what Paul was saying and Paul uh, the, 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 the right of the lesson said whether in pretense or in truth Christ is preached so whether you are you, your motivation or you are you, what you have um, but you, you have said the words which Christ go out when 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 the word of God goes out, whether it's pretense, whether it is, it's going to accomplish what God wants us. So, what are our motivation? What motivates us to come here? So, the women, they, were, they had already prepared their mind from Friday. So, they slept on that. We don't know what the men or the, the disciples were doing. <laughs> so, they woke up to go accomplish they were motivated to go anoint the body of Christ. They got there. They were the first one, women. Sometimes we, we think we, are, we cannot spread the gospel. So they went. Immediately they find out. They didn't walk. My lesson, my, my, my Bible was saying, they returned hastily, quickly. That means they ran to go tell the disciples. Peter they say these women, the, the, the right of the lesson used the word idol. Idol tells. Idol tells. Mm. Idol tells that, oh, you're These just talking about having your own yeah. ideas. Mm. But Peter, being Peter, you know, we have learned about Peter several so times. He, he, he said, no, I have to go see. He ran. And after he ran, he, he was, I, I, don't, I don't see where he came back to tell the other disciples. But he was still muffled. He didn't believe. So, <laughs> so he couldn't say what he has not believed. So are we, are we different than, uh, than them? Mm. So many of us do the same. as Like Peter, and for many of us, there is instance to accept something simply because someone else said it. So Christ wants us to, to be motivated first, Get prepared because the women were prepared. You heard that? the women were prepared to go. Mm -hmm. So first of all, they had um, they, they were motivated to do it and they were prepared. So that's why they woke up very early in the morning. Same to us. Let us get mot mot motivation and let us prepare to preach the gospel or to tell others about Christ. So my, my question still is. Um, <laughs> yeah, you didn't answer. <laughs> the, something I want us still to ponder as we discuss. So, what magnifies our experience or an encounter with Jesus? Is it, can we really have a good experience? Can we really have a good understanding? Can we really have a good encounter? Which is if we do not read and understand the word of God, can we? And if we can or we can't, does that happen to be the reason why it was so difficult for the disciples to believe at once when they had Jesus as rising? You know, um, you asked about the prophecy. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. The word of God, the prophecy, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this, when Christ met them, he says it was written mm -hmm. from the law of Moses. Yeah. I had, I had already told you. So when it's because of... Uh, in fact, let me help before you, you talk. Let me, it's written in 24. Luke 24, verse 25. That's what I want us to read. Verse 25 said, Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe 
or that the prophets have spoken. When we, when we still go down, it says verse 26, Or not Christ have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory. But I think we read, what we read we don't understand. That's the problem. You read for, we read for the sake of reading. And this happened to the disciples, even up to Peter denying Christ. He, he has no, this is the Messiah, because he talked about it. And now when it comes to the reality Jesus has died, is they, they are not even reflecting back. This was the Christ who is being talking in Isaiah, being led by a sheep, like a sheep. They, they, they were not comprehending. But thank God, Jesus is a good God. He opened their understanding so that they can comprehend the, the word of God. So they, they, as much as we want to prepare, we need to ask God to open our understanding. And there is no way you, we can read the New Testament without tracing the, the salvation from the Old Testament. So unless we let God open our understanding, then we can be reading as a story. I think this, the story was, it was just being written, but they didn't comprehend you so what the lesson is telling us is that our motivation should come from our experience with Christ and this experience with Christ is magnified when we understand what he said in his word we have to understand, read, understand, and believe the words. Believing the words, then we are motivated. We, this lesson this week is having so many things in the twin. I, I, rest, I, I said seven Ps. So we will be seeing several things here. One, experience. Two, power. Three, prayer. Four, plan. Or what we call strategy. All those things are all around there. But one thing is important and is key. Without it, the others don't make sense. Experience with Christ. So I just want to also you think with me. When we look at the disciples, it's like their view of what Jesus was preaching or teaching them for three and a half years was different. Their view was made or was um, was centered in what the culture, their culture was talking about. What their thinking expectations were different from what Jesus was talking about. Jesus said, I will die and I will raise up the third day. The, the kingdom Jesus was talking about was totally different from what the kingdom, the disciples, were thinking about. Them, and in fact, those words, uh, I'm just getting those words from uh, these disciples who are walking to Emmaus. They are discussing about, oh, we thought we had got a person who could help us. Now he died. You know that they are talking to us. And then Jesus, Jesus joins them. So it joins them as they discuss. Eh, what are you talking about? You, you have not heard about what? These things, which things? Like, there's a man who, Jesus, who came, he stayed with us, he taught us. We, we saw like deliverance to Israel has come. Eh, what happened? He died. Since three days, now is the third day. We, we were told by women who went there, they didn't find him. You know, still they are not believing. They thought like he was coming to help Israel. Israel in what sense that he will overpower the Romans who were persecuting them, who were ruling over them, so they established a kingdom. So you see, their, their worldview was different and that of Jesus was different. So my question is, did that affect their experience with Christ? Yes or no? I don't know. Does the worldview 
of us now affects our experience with God and how we do his work. Make a comment. Uh, mm. Yes. Their perception on Christ made them not to understand what Jesus came for. Mm -hmm. And that's why having experience about the life of Christ, what he did it on this earth, if you are not really studying the word of God, to understand why Christ came and why he died, it will make no difference to you. To them, it did not make any difference because when Christ comes and tells them, this is what I taught you. This is what I'm going to resurrect. And the, the, the Peter and the others cannot be understand. They have to say, yes, it's still true. Still, Jesus is alive, has been resurrected because it did not spend on time on the word. What does the word of God say? And it comes on the prophecy. It was prophesied. Jesus will come and die and save us. They side on... Um, what Jesus came for, actually what the disciples were thinking and that Jews were thinking about, it was not what is the Bible. It's totally different. The Jews now do not accept Christ because of the perception that when Christ was coming, it was the nation of the Jews. No. It was about the whole world. Even us now. There are still some of us. We have seen Christ died. He resurrected. But the way we look on Christ, because we don't spend time with the Bible, we cannot understand why Christ died. We think Christ died for the only day. People who keep the Sabbath. Christ also died for people who don't keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So you can take the message to them to tell them, okay, this is what you have come. By studying the Bible. So you, when you go to other people, you're not talking only about the Sabbath. You're talking about the Ten Commandments. So our perception also, if you cannot spend time on the Bible, you will never understand why Christ came. That's going to make a comment on that side. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, quick one. Um, wh what I thought about that is that uh, this is the essence of our need for the Holy Spirit of God to make us understand the Word of God when it is promised, when we read it in the Bible. Humanly, humanly, is like a, a, a false tales, stories. But when we get the Holy Spirit, we will understand. And that is why, according to my understanding, he told them, before he went to heaven, you have to receive this Holy Spirit so that you will be able to understand what you study, what you believe in, so that you can be able now to take it out there. If we don't understand, we have nothing to take to other people. Thank you. Uh, I, I think, Elder, if you have not encountered Christ, you know, sometimes we, we, we might, Peter walked for three and a half years, but he never encountered Christ when he was swearing and said, you woman, you know, mm -hmm. unless we get in, encountered with Christ and have this experience, when Christ opened their hands, his hands and saw the, the nails, so they had that ex the first experience. So they, they can now go out there and uh, tell the people that they experienced what they are saying. So unless we encounter with Christ, unless we have this experience, unless we let God, because when you're saying you read the Bible, you can read the Bible as a story. But look at the that guy, who was it? The when he was reading the Bible and he was not understanding and the yeah, the yeah, unit. Yeah, you know. So Christ taught, go and explain that. So unless Christ himself empowers us, like now we are going to see on the, the day of Pentecost, he say return, I, I, I will send a helper to help you. Unless we accept to let God and let him lead us, we, we will do the same thing that, that, that Peter did. Run there, look at that. But when, when Jesus appeared and said, they all, they all were puzzled. They were like, this is a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Until they see the nails. And Jesus asked, give me the food so I can eat. 
and you see that I'm not a ghost, I'm, 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 I'm human, or I'm, I'm somebody. So let God uh, uh, get us understanding. Because some of the, the people like us, we are up in a church, the unity, the, the Bible is talking about, the love of Christ is not there. What makes this? Can this partner with the, with, with the Christ? Is Christ envy? Does Christ hate people? So when I'm doing such a thing, I'm, I'm, I feel like I have not encountered with Christ to have the experience of him saving grace. Thank you. Um, this lesson is, is good. And uh, we can spend the whole day about the experience of our experience with God because that is the most important part of the start of the life of a Christian. You cannot be a Christian, a true Christian, unless you have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Without it, and the things we talk about here will be just stories. We are, we are like a club. Mm -hmm. And people who are saved, who have accepted Christ, who are going for mission, they have to be missionaries. Missionaries are people who have a motivation. They have a, a propelling force to go and tell the message. So if we miss that power or that propelling force within us, then the work will never be done. So I just want us to look at a few examples, one or two in the Bible, those people who are motivated. And one is Jeremiah. I want us to open the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 9. Somebody again to open a, a Psalms 51. Psalms 51, verse 10. And then we will finish with four. In uh, Acts 9, verse 5. And then we see what happens from there. If you've got them, we will read them very fast. We are basically seeing, we want to see how when you are motivated or when you have a personal experience, what is it that happens? Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Yeah. And Psalms 51. So we start with Jeremiah. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. But if I say, I will not mention him or speak anymore. In his name is what is in my heart like a fire. Mm -hmm. A fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of pouring it in. Indeed, I cannot. I cannot stay. I like the way mine was saying that it was saying then. <laughs> Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I will not stay. So meaning, like, once you have an experience with God, that message you have in you is like a fire. You can never keep quiet. It, it, you feel it burning, right? You feel you should say it. Nothing can make you stop. So that means you keep going because the message within you burns like a fire. What does I, Psalm say? Psalm say this, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sin. Yeah, I want you to read up to 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Plot, punch me uh, with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be white, whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Make me hear joy, hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Ten, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, mm -hmm. and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Okay. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Thank you. That's where I wanted you to reach. So the, the, the key word here, which I want us to have, is that we have to understand our condition. I have to understand myself that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. And I have to believe I am saved by having an encounter with Jesus Christ. Like David, whom we know the story very well. He took somebody's wife. That was not enough. He did what? He killed the husband. And then when this dawned on him that he was wrong, what did he do? He cried to God and asked God to forgive him. And when he forgave him, that's why in verse 11 it says, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12 says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Do you know that most of us have been in this church for as many years, but we have never had the joy of salvation. We are not happy. We don't enjoy being Christians. We are never happy. Except for those who don't understand what is being a Christian, what is being saved. We can't share this message happily with somebody. I am saved. And Jesus is coming again. So I want you to be among them. And then what people see in your life, do they see that joy? Or you are one of the people, once you have a problem, you also complain. You complain like anybody else. You don't show hope that, okay, things are difficult, but I know God has a plan. You know, people will go, eh, which plan? But, eh, you complain like anybody else. You are also blessed as everybody in this world. So that means, verse 13, which was saying, then I will teach transgressions, yeah. transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. David knew that he can only teach transgressors the truth and be converted to God if himself he is forgiven and he has a joy of salvation. So without it, he knew he could not do anything because they would not believe. It's the same thing that happens to us. So I don't know whether are we still living like we were before we were saved without the joy i don't know i just want to say um you know that is a personal experience that is myself to know am i living the way um the ways of god i'm um, just am i pretending and in the in the eyes of god you know when we pretend uh, towards people we cannot this this week I had a, a, an experience and I was ashamed of myself. 
Uh, this family, they are old, they are Lutheran. I've been feasting them, and they know I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. So uh, the thing was telling me to tell them about it, about Christ. They are Christians, and the lady reads, she's 80. And when I'm just pondering to maybe to say something, they had a question from a, a daughter-in-law. You, you said you are a Seventh-day Adventist. What is it, Seventh-day Adventist? I was ashamed that she's the one to ask me. <laughs> you know? I, I, I tried to explain. We had to open the Bibles and they say, can you come again? We need to know. We have been in this church. We have been in this church for a long time, but we don't know about the, the day. Then our day, the Sabbath day, our day is Sunday. So there are people out there, please, who need us to ask. And if, and if we had uh, encountered that, uh, all of us have encountered with Christ, mm -hmm. this church would be very full this morning. Why I'm saying that? When the disciples were told to go wait, it's not only the 12 who went to wait. The other people were there because when you see Peter standing, how many people were converted? How many people received and were baptized? How Three, many? 3,000. 3,000. That means there were so many people. And when uh, Peter stood up, the Jesus you crucified is the one we are talking about. They asked, what then can we do? Yep. He said, repent and be baptized. Mm -hmm. What about KCC? If we go out there and tell the wonderful story of Christ, can people say, what shall we do? It's just, it's, it's a collective because that one, they came in unity, mm -hmm. they were praying, they were asking for wisdom, strength, strength, and they allowed Christ to work in them. If Christ can work in us, can we go out there? Because when we are talking on Thursday, Helda is saying, uh, Thursday, uh, person was saying, a picture of the early church. What is a picture of me? How do I live? When I go out there, do I uh, present Christ in me? Because people will learn through what they see we are doing. People learn from the early church when they came together and they were boldly proclaiming Christ without fearing that they will be killed. Thank you. Acts. I want us to open Acts, Acts 1, um, Acts 1, 14, go back, Acts 1, 14, but I want us to look at from 8, Acts 1, 8, then we go to 14. Yeah. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Mm -hmm. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Then 14. 14 says, sorry. No, it's, it's okay. After 8, we go to 14. And that's to... Through 14? No. You jump, you jump to 14. This all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Okay. So, here Jesus gives a promise, and the promise he gives is which one? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Uh, you will receive the path? The power. Um, this thing is too loud. Huh? Okay, simply the same like. Okay, so he, he promise he promises them that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So he tells them go and wait. So the disciples and the women went. To wait. So I just want us to look at this the scene here. They have 
got the promise, they are waiting for it. But as they wait, they are together. And I want us, I wanted us to look at what are they doing when they are together waiting for the promise. And you know, as we talk, I want us as we discuss, we also look at we are also waiting. Are we waiting for anything as Christians? So what are we doing? What we are doing, is it the right one? Or what are we supposed to be doing as we wait? That means what I've, I've done like that, I need, I need to, to talk. What were they doing? Okay. <laughs> and why, why was, were they waiting? What were they doing? And was, why was it necessary? Yeah, after that, they, uh, they were praying and uh, conversing to each other because when the power will come, it will empower them to go out to be witnesses, as Jesus told them. So, as we are waiting the second coming of Jesus, we should be praying, read the Bible, and witness that Jesus is coming, be ready to the people to tell them. Thank you. So, one thing we see there is, as they were praying, one thing we saw in the pod, uh, Acts one fourteen, they were in one accord in prayer. One accord means what? Yeah. They were together. So there is nobody who feels is better than the other. Nobody who feels left out. Nobody feels. Ignored, everybody is within. He feels that's where he belongs. And of course, I want us to answer the question: Is that what we feel here now? Yeah, Go ahead. I think you uh, see answered the question. Uh, what I can say when I put all these passages together, mm -hmm. the Bible is telling us. You see the experience of David. Mm -hmm. David, he sinned. And it was more, more than sinning. He transgressed. Which means he went beyond he overboard of what the world wanted him to do. In himself, he saw that even God cannot forgive him. That's why he was crying to God and say, God, if you forgive me what I've done, I think there are people out here who have done wrong before you, who have sinned, who have lost hope. They don't even see how you can forgive them. If you forgive me, I will go out here and reach these people and bring them to you. So uh, that is now when he, he experienced God himself, even the disciples in their life, they knew who God was. They came together. They were praying. They were confessing their sins. Because they were doing that, God gave them power, more power, to go out like their father said before. You know, if there is fire burning you, you want to go where there is water, where there is something you can cool yourself. You, you can't wait. You need to run faster. So when we get the power of God, it will empower us and we need to stop to tell people the truth. Even those people who have hided from the truth, we will look for them and tell them, hey, God is so massive and it's wonderful. Thank you. Um, as the mic comes down here, I want us to read the words of Sister White in the book of Evangelism, chapter says, uh, page one, three to forty-two, it says, "Through much prayer, you must labor for souls, for this is the only method." Which one? What do we do? Through prayer, for this is the only method. We have much labor for souls in prayer. 
by which you can reach hearts. His father says, as we seek to win others to Christ, bearing the burden of souls in our prayers, our own hearts will troop with the quickening influence of God's grace. Our own affections will glow with more divine favor. Our whole Christian life will be more of a reality, more earnest, more prayerful. So my friends, there is no work we can do for God without being involved in prayer about it. We have to pray about it until our whole Christian life becomes a reality. Many a times we take God's work like we can simply wake up, make breakfast, call the family to the table, they eat it. No, that's not God's work. God's work is God's work and it has to be done in his own way. And therefore, we have to be in constant communication. Let me read the last one. It says, nothing is more needed in our work than the practical results of communion with God. This will impart to the worker a power that nothing else can give. Of, his, of this power, he must not allow himself to be deprived. There is nothing that can be done without, without the power of God. And he is the one to impart it. He will impart it, one, through our experience, two, through waiting in prayer, and three, reading his word. Those have to happen. Otherwise, much of the things we will say, and that's why people, when they look at it, they just laugh. Really? These are Christians, you say? They are waiting to go to heaven? I'm better here. So imagine when they compare us with where they are, and they find where they are is better than where we are, then what is missing in our lives? Yeah. yeah. We are about to conclude the lesson, so as we... Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. While we are waiting, that the, the lesson was saying that while we, we wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to help us mm. comprehend the great mission of God, we must, I loved that, I circled three times, we must unite to encourage um, each other, praying for God is Holy Spirit also, we should be aligning ourselves, apart from being united with others, we or I, I should align myself with God, ourselves and our church with God's priorities. The, the, our priority as a church, as an individual, is saving of the lost. I'm giving you an example of Peter. Peter, when he, he denied Christ. You know, when you do something wrong, you don't want to come to church. You don't, I have good news. When Peter denied Christ, he didn't go on the wall and, and, and stay there. He came and he was the leader. Nobody appointed him when he spoke. He started speaking. The Christ you crucified is the one we are talking about. You should repent. So regardless what we have done, regardless, let us align ourselves to Christ. Let us have the, encounter, the first encounter with Christ. Christ wants us to reach even the fallest. Because the lesson was saying, even those who pierced Christ were the first one to be reached. Even those who have hurt you, you don't say hi to them. Those are the first people we should reach because the, our work, our priority is to save the lost. That is the only work we've been given and that's why me and you, we are alive today. Just let us, let God give us that motivation, empower us so that we can reach others for the kingdom. Thank you. Uh, there's one writer known as A.W. Tosa. He says, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church today, 95% of what we do would go on and no one would know the difference. So what does that mean? Let me continue reading down. If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn 
from the New Testament church, 95% of what they did would stop and everybody would know the difference. So what does he say? That most of the things we are doing right now, they are not under the Holy Spirit. We are doing our own things. And therefore, whatever we are doing will continue because even if the Holy Spirit is not there, we will continue doing that. You know, that's a very, very sad statement and a very sad observation. So, Minister of Healing says, by the power of his grace manifested in the transformation of character, the world is to be convinced that God has sent his son as its redeemer. No other influence that can surround the human soul as such power as the influence of an unselfish life. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. That is the only way. You, you know, this lesson me is challenging me a lot. The idea that we are the only ones, we always come here and sit here, share, and then when you go out there, we don't share. That is a very backward idea. Then which mission are we doing? Because if we don't do it out there, you see so many people, you encounter with so many people. What have you told them? What did you tell them this week? How many people did you tell about Christ this week? The ones you met. Who told you they don't want to hear about Christ? Did you pray? Did you pray about it? You know, every morning when we wake up, our prayer should be, God, use me today. Show me whom to pass the message to. That should be our prayer. And if in our, in our prayer, that is what we did and we are motivated by that prayer, as we go day by day, hour by hour, you shall find yourself always sharing the message so easily because the Spirit will help you do it. Last evening, last maybe as I stopped, I was surprised, I was carrying somebody and we talked a lot, a lot of things. She was a, a little tipsy, I mean she was, she was uh, drunk, but we, <laughs> but we had an opportunity to discuss about Jesus lastly. And how it came about, I don't know. But she asked more questions as I talked. And I, I stopped for 10 minutes to answer her questions. And she was said, thank you for being open and telling me about Christ. I will think about those things. Then she went. So that means we are intimidated because we think it is us to do it. It's not us who do it. It is the Holy Spirit of God who will do it through us. So this lesson this week was talking about a motivation and a preparation for, for mission. We are motivated by the love of God. He has upon us and our experience. And then we are prepared by depending upon the Spirit of God and reading his word to know how to do it. So we encourage all of us that as a living church, on this earth now, we have to give our lives fully to God and ask him to help us understand how to do his work. Otherwise, the world is thirsty, the world is hungry, needs Jesus, but we are not telling it. There's a lot of work to be done. And it's us who have to be willing to tell the message. So I want to welcome all of you to understand that there is work and the work can be done through God's power. And it's ready. He has promised.
that he will give it to us to do it. Thank you very much, Elder. So this quarter we are learning one thing. God has sent us for a mission. Each and every one of you. Nobody has not been asked to call who is not sent by God. All of us. All of us. Are you ready? Take up the mission. Song number 1359. Hark the voice of Jesus. First, second, and last, then that will mark the end of our summer school. I, I, I've seen hands come up. Please, let's try to come up early next week. Supper. What's the discussion we're going to do? We'll learn a lot. 359. Hark the voice. Oh, the voice of Jesus calling. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. First dance and last. Go. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. Who will go and walk today? Fill so why the harvest waiting. Who will bear the ships away? Loud and long the master calleth, rich reward he over stream. Who will answer quickly saying, He am I, O Lord, send me. Number four. While the souls so men are dying, and the master calls for you, let none hear you idly saying, There is nothing I can do. Gladly take the task he gives you, let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he call him. He are my Lord send me. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you because you have given us a mission to do. To cooperate and to collaborate and work with you in spreading the gospel. Our Lord, I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, each and every one of us who you have called will respond positively and go out and do your mission to hasten your second coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, the choristers.